Hey guys. With the rise of retro gaming, there's been more demand for OEM controllers. Since the PlayStation 3 is no longer in production, finding that mint pure PlayStation 3 OEM controller is becoming harder and harder to find and even more expensive. I was in the market for finding a spare PlayStation 3 controller and came across this posting on AliExpress. The reviews look great, it looked like a solid replica, and the price was right, and I thought I'd share my experience using it. In today's video, we'll be exploring the key differences of the AliExpress controller, how to spot a replica controller, and test and see if it's worth purchasing one altogether. Let's begin. At first glance, the controller itself feels like a PlayStation 3 controller in your hand. From the material used on the shell, to the weight of the controller, even to the feeling of the surface of the buttons, it matches that to an OEM controller to a T. If you put a blindfold over my face and you gave me both controllers, I wouldn't be able to tell which is which. It's only when you start actually using the controller is when you can see the big difference. Let's start with the L2 R2 triggers. In an OEM controller, the more you press into the trigger, the more resistance that follows based on the position where the trigger is being pressed into. So if it's not fully engaged, it's very light, but when it's fully engaged, it feels a lot more different and a lot more tight. In the fake controller, however, the second you apply even just the slightest amount of pressure, that resistance is fully engaged. It kind of reminded me of one of those air pumps you use on a bike and the way it felt. I know that's kind of a weird comparison, but using these triggers, that's the first thing that came to my head and it's not really a good feeling. The thumbsticks are another story. The OEM PlayStation 3 controller thumbsticks are very fluid, free to move around and have no resistance to them. You can make perfect circles like no tomorrow. The replica, on the other hand, has a lot more resistance, it's not nearly as fluid, and when even when you click in the thumbsticks, it makes this really gnarly, unsatisfying popping sound that none of the OEM controllers do. So if controllers like this exist in the market, then how do we know that we're buying an actual genuine PlayStation 3 DualShock controller and not a replica like the one in my hand right now? My next piece of advice is check the back of the controller for where the Sony sticker is placed. Behind the Sony sticker on the controller, there should be a box layout there. And depending on how the sticker was applied, you can really tell if it's OEM or not. Non-OEM ones are usually off base and they doesn't look like it's been properly applied, whereas OEM ones are always perfect. The last tip I can say is check the fit and finish of the controller. If you can, put it in your hands and just try everything. Try everything from thumbsticks, triggers, buttons, you name it, and even try squeezing the controller too. If you find there's a lot of feedback or it feels like it's gonna fall apart in your hand, then you probably have a replica controller or it's been opened up at one point and not properly put back together. To get a good idea on how this controller performs in a variety of PlayStation 3 games, I chose the following genres, third person shooters, first person shooters, RPGs, fighting games, and racing games. Need for Speed is a classic and it plays decently on this controller. It seems playable enough. The thumbsticks and the trigger issue I mentioned earlier in the video still persist when playing this game, mostly when you're churning or doing maneuvers, but overall the core experience seemed pretty much playable altogether. Now, I'm not the biggest racing car fan, so I can't attest to say if this is going to be perfect for Gran Turismo or any other simulator racing games, but I will say that it was very playable for most arcade racing games. So if that's your cup of tea, then this controller is tolerable. Now, Modern Warfare 2 plays really poorly on this controller. This controller has no sense of any sort of sensitivity at all. I had to lower the sensitivity down to 1 just to be able to play competitively in this game. For that reason alone, I do not recommend this controller for any competitive first person shooters. Oblivion felt uh, all right, I guess. Now Oblivion does get a pass because it's not a Twitch based shooter like Call of Duty. So that moment to moment gameplay really doesn't matter in Oblivion. However, it's still the equivalent to using one of those ball mouses from the 90s. I found that using the third person mode in Oblivion was significantly better and actually played better too. Plant vs Zombies Garden Warfare was nearly unplayable as well. Due to the sensitivity of this controller, making any sudden movements will cause the controller basically to go all over the place. I feel like if the game had stronger aim assist, this wouldn't be such a persistent issue. However, it will require a lot of tweaking in the controller settings to get right. This is one of the games that I played that first stuck up to me and said, wow, this is really not that playable. WWE, on the other hand, actually felt fine. No real issues or concerns really popped up. 
It seems like with this controller, if it's slower paced style game, not really reliant on that moment to moment gameplay, it actually plays decently. Now, I wouldn't use this controller for games like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter that are really hyper competitive, but for games like WWE or any other piratey fighter arcadey fighting game, it's probably just fine. Overall, I'm really conflicted on this controller. For me at least, this controller is perfect for a party setting or a backup controller type of environment. This isn't something I would replace a broken OEM DualShock 3 with, as it really does not feel anywhere near as good or as precise as the OEM controller does. I do think these controllers are not awful, but they're not very great either. If you ever went to a friend's house and he handed you a controller and it happens to be a Mad Cats one, if you know what I'm talking about, you're going to have a hard time. Anyways, that's it for today's video, guys. If you made this far in the video, I just want to say thank you so much. I read all your comments and your support is much appreciated. Let me know in the comments down below if this is the kind of video you want to see or any other suggestions for finding replica controllers or your personal experience with them. Until next time, see you guys later. Peace.